What is up everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at Orchestral Tools Berlin series. So if you haven't heard yet, uh, Orchestral Tools is currently hosting a 50% off sale for the entire Berlin collection. And this includes the strings, woodwinds, brass, and percussion. These are all very solid and robust libraries and will definitely make a solid addition to your arsenal if you haven't picked up any of them yet. Um, if you do need you know, a full-sized, uh, comprehensive workhorse library. We're going to go through some of my favorite patches from each one and kind of discuss the sound and legato and all of that. Um, but I, yeah, I just wanted to show you, you know, some of this library or some of these libraries to uh, give you a sense of their sound and their playability and all of that. So let, without further ado, let's get into the strings. Um, for Berlin Strings, which I believe was the third lot no, the second library, I guess they recorded um, after Berlin Woodwinds, I think. Um, you can see like this is just for the first violins. Just look at the number of articulations that it comes with here. And this is, of course, after an update. But generally, uh, Orchestral Tools is known for being pretty comprehensive with their sampling. So that's just for one uh, section of the strings. Um, each of them is pretty much consistent. You know, they, they all have a, a, a breadth of articulations that is present in these instruments. And so I wanna demonstrate one of the multi-patches. So the folder structure is multi-articulation, single articulations and time machine patches, which essentially allows you to stretch the samples without too many artifacts and then maintain the realistic tails and releases of the instruments themselves. So starting with the violins one longs, I went into the multi-articulations violins one and pulled up the longs patch. And this includes legato, sustains, uh, this one is sustained accented, also trills, and you can also load in other articulations to your heart's content. So let's have a listen to the Violins 1 legato. So the tail on that sound is one of the most magical that I've ever heard. And I think, you know, I really fell in love with the sound as soon as I started playing with the Violins 1 Legato patch. That was the first patch I believe I ever loaded into my template. And I was like, this is, this is beautiful. So it became a workhorse for me ever since in combination with Cinematic Studio Strings. So that is essentially the Legato. And you could hear that it's basically an adaptive Legato. Um, in the single patch, which we'll hear in a little bit, um, there, there's basically three different styles of Legato. There's the slurred Legato, which is be uh, the best for slow playing, and it includes like portamento. And then agile Legato, which is naturally for faster playing, and then fast runs when you're actually playing quicker playing or quicker notes, uh, and the Legato transitions simply speed up to accommodate with that. One of the downsides, though, of the Berlin stuff in general, especially with the strings and the brass, is the amount of RAM they actually take up, the amount of storage the samples take up. So for this one multi-patch, you can see it takes up 1.41 gigabytes. And if you if your machine only has like eight gigabytes, eight, sorry, gigabytes of RAM, like my old laptop did, um, it really brought it to its knees. Like it really crushed it, pretty much. And uh, even a single legato patch. Uh, is basically one gigabyte worth of RAM. So just considering that if you have a stronger system, you should be okay. Um, right now, I currently have 64 gigabytes of RAM, which allows me to load more instruments of this nature and not have too many distortions or you know pops and clicks. But you do get the occasional one if your system is not as robust. So just keep that in mind. But 
you know, I personally feel like the sound, the legato, the playability for me is really worth it. And it, uh, it just sounds great to my ears. So when I first started playing with this library, I was like, it's the perfect string sound for me at the moment. Let's hear, let's have a listen to the shorts. So some staccatos. Now, in general, you hear how wet the sound is actually. I mean, you do have a nice amount of detail, but because only the tree mic is loaded up, you get that definition that's not as present. So you might want to load in a bit of the close mic, which will give you a little more of that sound. I personally like the stereo width of the tree mic. I find that with the close mic by itself, it tends to sound a little bit uh, mono in a way. So it kind of sounds like... Right, it's kind of like left focus in a way and it's kind of just in that one area. So blending it together gives you some better results here. Right, so yeah, I, I think it's just a combination of all these mic positions that really adds up to the RAM there, but that's just something to keep in mind. But I personally, like this, this is why I personally like to invest in, uh, in libraries with a slightly wet sound because the, like the Cinematic Studio series, uh, Cine samples, and orchestral tools, they're all recorded in medium-sized scoring stages, like not overly large, like um, I guess like Air Studios in London, where the sound is so reverberant or can get so reverberant that it becomes difficult to to match different libraries together. Uh, but it's so easy to to mix um, CSS and like um, Berlin, for example, together because the the hall sound is kind of similar in a way. And, you know, the tails kind of match in a way that uh, doesn't require too much fuss. So that's nice. Okay, I want to show you the Chelli Legato. So this is one of my favorite patches in Berlin Strings. All right, so you noticed how the legato forms uh, or types were switching on the fly as I was playing, which is really cool. But if you don't really like a particular transition, you can actually go in and um, force that transition to be the one that you want. So for example, if there was a slur between them that was too portamento or too slidey, uh, then you can always change it to a slightly faster transition so that um, it doesn't have that effect. And then it's cool that these strings also come with a concertino type of emulation. So it sounds a little bit thinner, right? And it, it has that kind of filter sound on it. So now another cool feature is that uh, Berlin Strings comes with a runs uh, patch for each of the instruments. So 
I, I, except for the bases, I believe. But if I go into the singles, violins, one has, um, where is it? Where is it? I believe should be playable runs or legato ostinato arp so this is one right here legato ostinato arp so as like arpeggiation right like you can literally play ostinati using this patch which is really cool i'm um, just trying to see if there's other ones so it doesn't look like there is uh violas should have the same idea playable glissandi is a really cool patch repetitions is always also really nice to have um so I don't see a dedicated runs patch here, but the uh, the runs legato type or the fast runs is also present in there as well. And then here for the cello, we have the legato ostinato harp. So let's have a listen to what this sounds like. So there we go. You basically hear all the notes very, very clearly, and um, it, the legato keeps up very well because it's like a dedicated patch for that. And then here we have the basis legato. So. So I saw a few comments of people saying they didn't really like the legato and how it how it transitions. Maybe it's a little bumpy, but I personally disagree. I like how the legato works and how responsive it is to my playing. And 99% of the time, I don't need to change anything. I just literally play in my line and the adopt, adaptive engine does the rest of the work for me. So I can definitely give Berlin Strings a, a shout out there. All right, moving on to Berlin Woodwinds. So this is the first library they ever recorded. And I personally still use the... Uh, the legacy samples so they have Berlin Woodwinds legacy and revive and while I do use revive sometimes I find myself turning to legacy a little bit more just because it, it's a little more upfront in its tone and it has a very clear passionate signature to it so it kind of sounds like this Let's go to the runs transition. So this is a patch meant specifically for runs. So this is definitely like one of those patches that's meant to be layered in with a, like a legato patch, for example. So if you don't want to use the legato patch for your runs, you can always hold a note and then play the runs transition patch to your fast scale. And then at the end, you can layer it in with the regular sustain patch at the very end there. So um, when you're layering different articulations, that really brings the library uh, to life a little bit. Then you can get really creative with the articulation choices. Uh, the other standout for me in this library is the bassoon. So the uh, oboe, English horn, and clarinet all have uh, a nice tone to them, but I personally find the oboe the weakest one in the legacy, at least, legacy version. Um, the clarinet is nice, but I personally don't use clarinet that much. In my writing, I tend to use the warmer bassoon and the flute for an airy texture. So this is what the bassoon legato sounds like.
wicked. Just a beautiful sound from the Teldex Hall. A little bit of Hall doesn't hurt anybody. <laughs> Unless you're going for like VSL, you know, that super dry sound, then fine, do that. But that's not what I do. Anyway, uh, then um, Berlin Woodwinds also features some dedicated uh, trills patches. So recorded trills, and it's really cool because all you need to do is play the half step or the whole step, and then the recorded trill will actually play for you. So. And it actually shows you here what notes you're playing. Let's try the flutes. So here we have whole tone all the way up to a fourth, so. So just a lot of options there, and I love that it's all condensed into this one patch. It's a really cool feature to have. Uh, actually, let's hear it maybe in the uh, oboe as well. So here we actually have runs from a, a whole whole tone, um, or is it half tone? Let's see. Yeah, from a half tone to a perfect fifth. Okay. So you may or might might not like the sound of an oboe, but I personally do. It's it, I think it's my favorite woodwind instrument. All right, so the woodwinds are a clear favorite for me. The brass, I don't currently use as much because I tend to use uh, Cine Brass and Cinematic Studio Brass for longer legato lines, but I have used the solo horn for um, more background chorale textures, and I think it really excels in the slower and... Uh, more romantic sounding lines and also because the dynamic range of Berlin brass is not as wide as like Berlin strings or Berlin woodwinds for example it's more laid back and caps at about an mf so here's what it sounds like Now on the other hand, the staccatissimo does give you some punch. So this is what it sounds like. And then we have a repetitions patch, which sounds like this. And you can uh, make it to make it go to triplets or double time or single time. You can lock it to your host tempo, which I currently have enabled. Um, so it's just really nice. Always nice when it, when it can be uh, locked to the host tempo. All right, let's go on to the trumpets. This is also uh, a really nice sounding ensemble. And this is the benefit of having a library that has multiple dynamic layers is that it can really crossfade between them. And when you release the sound uh, of the instrument, the instrumentalist playing harder into their instruments, um, that realistic sound, right, echoes in the hall when you release. So the release tails are just so important and especially in, a, in an exposed solo context. Then we have the trumpet ensemble staccatissimo. Again, uh, a wide dynamic range in this one. All 
right, let's move on to the trombone one legato. So here we go. And again there, we kind of cap out at around a mezzo forte. And then finally, the tuba. Very warm, very subtle, very luscious. Now, a couple little bumpy transitions in there, like the legato was slightly loud in some areas and, you know, the subsequent notes kind of dried up a little bit. So, you know, the the, the, the transitions aren't perfect, but maybe when they poured it over to sign, that, that will be addressed and be a little smoother. But all in all, I'm very happy with the libraries. You know, they're, the, the sound is really the main signature that people go for. And also the detail, the amount of... Um, Articulations, of course, is a big factor if you really need an all comprehensive type of library. Um, Orchestral Tools does not come short with articulations, so that is always a big plus. And then finally, let's talk about the percussion. So pull up the contact instance here. Um, so this is a very comprehensive library as well. So let's go to, uh, here we go, the main collection. And we have drums, mallets and keys, unpitched metals, miscellaneous percussion, and some toys. But let's just go over the main ones. So we have singles and rolls. So I think it's really cool that, you know, they have a dedicated patch for singles and rolls, but then another patch for performed dynamic swells, crescendos, decrescendos, things like that of that nature. If you need a totally realistic result with no programming, um, those will be a good, op good option for you. Then we have the snares, which sound like this. Then we have the toms. So this is what the toms sound like. And now I pulled out the multi-patch so we can have different, uh, different sounds here.
All right, let's just go through a few of these a uh, little quicker here. Then we have the xylophone. Wouldn't that be so cool for a decoration? I love that. That's really cute. All right, then the glockenspiel. Make sure not to release them too short though, because the tail kind of cuts off right away. Kind of like that. But the staccatos. Lovely. Then we have the tubular bells, regular church bell sounds here. Uh, then this is the minor. Um, probably said that wrong, but let's have a listen. That's a type of symbol. just very dynamic these symbol swells and that's just one of them so I went into the symbols I pulled in the minor multi but you can also you know pull in these single articulations if you want to almost there guys then we have the bell tree which is like this yeah this is multi-sampled all across the keyboard here and you can literally drag your fingers across to create your own custom glissandi there. And let me see, but it also comes with glisses as well. So let's have a listen to a couple of those. So you get the idea. Again, a very upfront signature sound. Now the timpani are considered like an expansion pack to Berlin percussion. So it's, it's basically its own dedicated library, but let's have a listen to the single hits in the timpani. All right, let's hear the rolls. All right, then some repetitions. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, and then you can uh, have a timpani multi as well, which I've pulled in there.
All right, and that is an overview of some of my favorite patches of the Berlin series. Um, to be honest, I probably use percussion the, the least out of all of them. I do use it sometimes for the bell tree and the alternative um, instruments that I don't necessarily like as much in Cineperk, but at the moment I use Cineperk for most of my percussion needs. Percussion I use a little bit less in for the Berlin stuff, but the ones I use the most are probably strings and woodwinds I pretty much use in every single production just because I really love the upfront tone. And again, the signature it has of the Telex scoring stage, uh, it just, it's pretty unmatched in my opinion. Like the two best stages that I've come across are the Sony scoring stage in uh, the Cine Samples products and the Orchestral Tools Teldex scoring stage. So these two sounds are pretty much unparalleled in my personal opinion. Uh, but the way I use these libraries is I use the Berlin strings to layer in with Cinematic Studio strings if I'm doing lush flowing passages where Cinematic Studio strings is slightly too dark and I want a little more detail and something to brighten it up further, I'll layer in some Berlin strings with that. Um, also, you know, it's legato is, like I told you, um, very playable and the way it feels under the fingers is very nice for me. So I tend to use it just to improvise a little bit for inspiration because it really feels like the instruments, or sorry, the, like the performers are right next to you when you're playing on the keyboard. Uh, the brass have a lovely sound to them, especially the legato solo instruments. It's just, you know, even though even though the pro programming isn't perfect, um, the the sound, the quality, the crispiness of it is so it's so divine. Like I I don't know how else to describe it. It's very clear and it's uh, it's very soothing to listen to these samples in in my like view. So a couple things you might want to look out for. Number one, that uh, these libraries are not cheap. Um, you know, orchestral tools is usually associated with top shelf products at top shelf prices and, you know, well-deserved because of the comprehensive sampling and the sound quality and all of that. Um, they've charged, you know, a premium for these libraries. So it's more of an incentive now while they're at 50% off to dive in if this is something you're interested in. If you're looking for an additional set of instruments to really augment what you currently have, then this is a good choice. If you're going for more the traditional route with a classical style of writing, I would definitely consider these libraries. For the trailer stuff, I would definitely turn to something like the Metropolis Arcs, where they have a more upfront sound. It's a little more gritty, um, more punchy in general. The Berlin stuff, the additional articulations and the extended techniques shine in more detailed writing where you need more detail and a little more control over every single thing. So. Um, that's what I would personally use the Berlin stuff for. And uh, and that's one of the reasons I picked it up is because, you know, I, my, my style of writing is more the Disney stuff, like more detailed, more classical in nature. So it's always nice when you have the personal control over each of the orchestral sections and you can tweak the dynamics as you want and all of that. Um, it opens up a lot of options for you. So anyway... I hope this video helps at least a little bit in uh, helping you make a decision for your Berlin uh, needs, your Berlin series needs. Um, let me know if uh, if this did help at all, um, which library seems to stand out to you the most. You know, if you're lacking one in your collection, do you think that it would complete your collection in a really nice way? And do you really need it to um, to continue making music? Because that's that's kind of the main question we should be, always be asking. Will this new library that I buy, uh, like what can it do that my current libraries cannot do, you know? Or don't do, I should say. So that's always the question. Do I really need this new library, right? And with gear acquisition syndrome, it's so easy to to just buy it without a second thought. So really ask yourself those questions, especially at the price point that uh, these libraries are normally at. And yeah, just again, keeping keep in mind that most of these patches take a little extra RAM than other libraries, as, especially the Legato uh, patches, again, can take up to one gigabyte per, uh, per Legato patch. So if your system is not built for that type of thing, then you might wanna consider something else, but you know, if you're if you're invested in the sound and you're down to freeze tracks all the time, then you know I'd say go for it. <laughs> so, totally up to you. But again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And before you go, I want to give you my free guide on how. So not how, but um, my my favorite sample libraries to date uh, that contains like strings, woodwinds, brass, and percussion. I've also added in sections like pianos, jazz libraries, ethnic libraries. I'm always like looking for new libraries to add to that collection and expand the list. So it's currently in the it's currently in the works for another update, but. 
if you want to check that out and maybe um, uh, you know have a little guide for your next sample library purchase, I put the link in the description box below. It's absolutely free. You can download it right now, and uh, it'll give you a pretty good idea of like the type of sound that I look for when I'm browsing sample libraries. So anyway, um, that's that's my gift for you for watching this video. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.